that sticks. Does that rock stick? You gotta be kidding me. Here's what I think of your town. Wow. My name is David, and this series is the story of how I, a guy terrified of heights, is rebuilding my self-worth after a lengthy divorce by overcoming my fears with the lofty goal of summoning a thousand mountains. Gem Lake, this 8 kilometer 5 mile hike in Rocky Mountain National Park, is an easy hike up to a beautiful picturesque lake among the lumpy mountains north of Estes Park in Colorado. This journey doesn't end at the lake though as I get summit fever, go off trail, and climb up the mountain above the lake. You gotta be kidding me. There's just a big elk sitting here. <laughs> wow. Hey buddy. Wow. So I just pulled back into town. <laughs> There's more elk. There's elk everywhere here. <laughs> Here's what I think of your town. He does not give a <laughs> Good afternoon from beautiful Rocky Mountain National Park and yet another completely filled trailhead parking lot. <laughs> I'm, I'm just as confused as you are. You see everything on trails these days. I thought a horse was a weird thing on a trail. Oh, nice photo. So there are horses. Yeah. <laughs> this is called the Lumpy Rock Trailhead, I believe. Um, as you can see around me here, there's just tons of lumpy rocks and the landscape around here is fantastic. The only downside about this place is it's not drone friendly because it's in a national park, but I can skirt the outside to get a few shots, so let's get going. So I've encountered a plant here. I don't know what this is, and I uploaded a few pictures to my app, and it tells me it's a garden red currant or a gooseberry. This obviously doesn't look like a gooseberry or a currant, so I really don't know what it is. It looks like some sort of raspberry. There's red berries. They come off on single um, pieces here. They're not in clusters, but uh, I've, yeah, and they're kind of a darkish purpley red. So I don't know what this thing is. Really cool. It's really exciting to find new plants here in Colorado. This is something. Uh, fresh and new to me. So I'm about halfway up this trail, it's pretty short. Uh, we're going up there and then on top I think, that's where the lake is. I'm not sure if there's a view from Gem Lake itself, so I decided to jump up on these rocks and uh, definitely, definitely worth it. It's awesome up here in quite a unique kind of chunky or lumpy as the uh, trailhead suggests landscape.
Those two are having a private lunch, so I decided to leave them and come back to the main trail. Let's head further. The lake shouldn't be too far up here. Halfway up hiking to Gem Lake, you get this fantastic view of the town below, Estes Park. The amount of stacked boulders here and just the way they're shaped, it's incredible. And all these mountains are formed by the same sort of stacked rocks. I'm pretty sure Gem Lake is just around the corner here. It's got to be close. Pretty wild. Look at this stack of rocks. It's almost like someone created it like that. It's like bricks. Almost half the elevation of the entire hike is just in this last section here. These are some of the deepest steps I've ever experienced on a hike. They're like three or four feet tall, some of them. So it's got to be the top because there's a sign there po pointing out a toilet and uh, this is a pretty free toilet down here just on a platform So my immediate thought as soon as I got here to Gem Lake is how do I get up there? How do I get up there? Now you can go up there and maybe up, but I know full well from uh, Arches National Park, I got stuck on a rock. <laughs> I scrambled up and I, I couldn't get down and a guy had to come over and uh, 
put his hands out and cup my foot to give me one foot rest to help get me down. And I'm looking at this and I know that's gonna happen if I scramble up there. So, uh, there's tons of these really fat chipmunks like this guy. They're not afraid of people, obviously people feed them. Standing at Gem Lake, I had convinced myself I wasn't going to scramble up the mountain. After overhearing a guy talking to his family about how he wanted to go up and his family convinced him not to, I decided at that point that I would be going up. I knew full well that if I didn't at least try, I would regret it and be disappointed in myself. You see, I started climbing mountains to push myself out of my comfort zone. As I gain more and more experience and increase my skill set, I have to keep pushing myself on new challenges. Pushing myself into these moments of extreme discomfort is what makes me grow as a person. This is what makes us feel alive. And this, for me, is a major source of rebuilding my self-worth after a bad divorce and failures within my business. With every summit, I rebuild the once shattered version of myself. So I'm looking at this right behind me here, this peak. Uh, it looks doable. I'm gonna try climbing up over there and just see if it's, you know, safe. I'm not gonna do any scrambling that's uh, non-reversible, but it looks okay. So let's go give it a shot. So I can either go up here, which looks pretty good, or this, which looks not as good. This one's got exposure, but it looks a lot cleaner. Oh yeah. Look at the view out here, holy crap. Poor man's drone. Woo! Okay, so the next objective. Uh, oh. Might be too much, we'll see. Might be too much. There's one section right up there which just looks like you gotta climb straight up. It doesn't look good. I'll just move a little further up. Sometimes it changes when you get closer. Oh, 
It's windy up here. Okay, we're gonna leave my stuff here. We're most of the way up the mountain now. It was at this point I started to get nervous, with most of this being class three with a few class four moves climbing up this rock, it being later in the day and seeing rain clouds on the horizon and knowing I'm all up here by myself. At the same time, I was starting to get that feeling again, a feeling of pride, a feeling of self-worth, a feeling I once let other people take away from me, I would now build back myself to create the new foundation of my mind. Once reaching this spot, I didn't realize that there would be a big hole between this piece of rock and the next chunk over. The only option from here to cross is doing a double dino, jumping across with two hands to catch, which is not something I wanted to attempt on what looked like to be an eight to 10 foot gap. So there's a huge like crevasse right there, whatever, gorge. Um, so this is the high point of this rock. So yeah, that crack there is like huge. So it's hard for me to get up here. This is like testing myself. Now I gotta get down because it's getting really windy and kind of scary up here. My hat's going crazy. Oh, Woo. feels good though. Feels good. Looks like a storm is coming. Time to get down real quick. Uh, I had my two minutes of glory up here. There's definitely too big of a crack over there to get to that summit block. And now I'm gonna figure out how to get down. Okay, I came this way. I went to that little tree and then I hooked a left. That's right. So we're gonna do that. Okay. It's no problem. Let's go down here and here. We'll parkour. Hopefully that sticks. Does that rock stick? Lodged. I don't really want to trust this dead wood or <laughs> this rock. So there's nice big juicy jugs here. And I think water is carving them out. Let's get my hip over and then we can hook and grab this. There we go, that's nice. This is probably one of the hardest spots. So. Okay. I can't see anything because it's hard. But... Okay. So we're off that block. I snuck through here. Yeah, this is definitely where I came up. So right there is my target. Not too bad, it's very grippy rock. Plant my feet, plant my big butt. 
I have to shuffle and hold this ledge here. This is like perfectly stick. Grab this jug and spin. Yep. That's a little scary looking down there. Let's go this way. Okay, there's my other stick. These sticks almost mark the trail. Okay, so I took a little break there. Next part. Yeah. And then, yeah, I gotta get down to that rock where the base of this tree is. There we go. There we go. There we go. Tiptoe down here. Tiptoe. Okay. This ended up being the experience I was looking for on this mountain. It pushed me and helped me grow in multiple ways, and I'd love to go back and hike more of the peaks of the Lumpy Ridge. I'm getting really, really warm. Oh, I'm gonna stick my butt in here. There we go. Well, I definitely feel very uh, proud of myself and accomplished. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a scary one. From down here, it looks like, oh, it doesn't, you just walk right up, but there's definitely, yeah, spots you have to, you gotta dig in and go up. Um, overall, it's like not the scariest scramble out there. You, most of it is kind of protected, at least the way I went, protected scramble. And this place is completely cleared out since I went up there. There's one couple that saw me going up there and they climbed up to the first bluff and then they, uh, they waved to me when I got to the top. And then uh, another couple with a kid here was, they said they were watching me crawling up the rocks. <laughs> so, well, that does it for that one. Uh, I'm pretty tired. I didn't bring enough water. So something to note about that, it's quite hot up there, it's really hot up there. So bring more water than you think. Um, it just kind of really sucks the moisture out of you going up there. Something to note is Rocky Mountain National Park has incorporated the same thing as Arches National Park. That's the timed entry ticket. So you need to buy a ticket for a specific one hour block that allows you to enter the park for that one hour block and then you can stay all day. Um, some people I noticed just where I'm sitting here, just outside the park, they'll just park here and they walk in so they don't have to get a ticket. I don't know if that's allowed or whatever, but that is something people do. So if you can't get a ticket, I don't know if they limit, they want to limit the amount of people on the trail or they just want to regulate the amount of people going through the parking lot. I'm not sure. So you can see the Lumpy Ridge and Gem Lake sign there and there's tons of spots to park here. Enjoyed these episodes, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. If you want to support me, you can share these videos on Facebook. That would greatly help or directly on Patreon at patreon.com slash David Hiking. Until next one, have a great day.